to Mike's Overactive Imagination, we're going to start another series. Uh, this time we're going to explore equipment from my collection, or toys from my attic, so to speak. Um, we're going to do one at a time, just simply because it'll be just easier for me to remember some of the details. We'll start with this thing here. It's called the Aragon 4004. It's a power amplifier. Aragon is the name of the product series. There were uh, a bunch of different series. There's the Aragon and then there's the Accurus, which came later. The company behind the product was a company called Mondial Designs. World, Mondial. <laughs> How's that for my Italian? Mondial Designs, started by two gentlemen from New York City, Tony Federici and Paul Rosenberg. I met these two boys back in the uh, early 90s. In 1986 or so, the two got together and decided on something very ambitious. They were going to start a company manufacturing extremely high quality products at a very affordable price. Now at the time, I guess still is, that, that segment was the, the two market leaders, if you will, was a company called BNK. For those of you old enough, you might remember it's not Brill and Kier, the company that manufactures professional microphones. So BNK, I think they were out of Buffalo, and then PS Audio. Those are the two big brands. There were others, of course, but these two were the market leaders. So these two boys decided they're going to do even better. They're going to make products that are incredibly good at similar prices manufactured in the U.S. Now back then, made in China was not a thing, uh, so it wasn't so much a big deal anyway. But they had an ace up their sleeve. They decided they were going to talk to the best designers that they knew to make their designs for them and then manufacture it through a, a, a third-party contractor using extremely high-quality parts. And so the designer they chose for the preamp and the amplifier was none other than Dan D'Agostino, formerly of Krell, now of Dan D'Agostino Master Audio Systems. I believe the first product was the 4004 and also the 2004. The 4004 means 200 watts into 8 ohms, 400 into 4 ohms, stable into 2 ohms. Uh, the two versions of the 4004 were a single-ended version, the RCA, and then the balanced version as well. And then the preamp was called the 24K, as in gold. And then subsequently they had another preamp called the 18K. When the products exploded on the scene, it was crazy. People were blown away by how good it is. Um, the technology is insanely good. Uh, I'll show you a few things in a moment. Even the um, industrial design. This was done by a gentleman called Robbie Wesson. Again, old timers may remember Robbie was the gentleman, the artist that was responsible for the covers of the Absolute Sound. And so this V is there so that when you stack something on top, the V acts as a chimney. It will still allow for the heat to evacuate from the amplifier. But also, from a distance, you instantly know that this is an Aragon just because of the V. So very, very smart. Um, what I loved about this amplifier was the sound quality, build quality, value, and reliability. In all the years that, well, let me back up a little bit. In 1991, we started Audio Excellence. And back then, as I've said before, we had no money. We wanted all these great brands, but we couldn't go after them. We just had no money. But the one brand that I absolutely wanted was Aragon. Um, so we went and spoke with them, and they said, OK, we'll get back to you. They went to talk to the existing dealer in Toronto at the time. And just so you know, back then, all these different brands, very few of them were willing to talk to us because they were already well represented. Plus, on top of which, we were a no-name uh, um, uh, company. Nobody knew who we were. They might have known me from having already met me a few times in the industry, but the, you know, whenever you start a company, there's a very high likelihood that you'll fail. And so I, I'm not uh, uh, surprised that most of them wouldn't talk to me or at least would not give me the time of day. But these guys were really nice. They said, okay, let me, let me get back to you. 
then they went to talk to the uh, dealer, the existing dealer, and the existing dealer basically said, if you open Audio Excellence up, we will drop you. Now remember, we're a nobody. Even if they had opened us up, we would have been no threat whatsoever. But they wanted to keep the exclusivity. And of course, these two boys from New York City decided, you know, who are you to tell us what to do? You know, uh, and basically gave them the middle finger and said, we're opening up Audio Excellence, which was insane. They were walking away from guaranteed sa annual sales to go with us with no guarantee whatsoever. We could have failed the same year. Thankfully, they took a chance on us because it turned out to be a great relationship. We grew like crazy because we were able to really promote the product and, and show our enthusiasm, rightfully so, really great product. And we grew with the company, and the company grew also. Uh, let me talk a little bit about this particular amplifier. Uh, this is the single-ended version, not the dual model. Uh, sorry, not the um, uh, balanced version. Uh, if I'm not wrong, both of them have dual mono transformers, so one transformer for each side. And this was, again, fairly unique back at the time, especially in this price range. Back at the time, in this price range, it was either mono blocks, so you have two separate chassis, or if you had a single chassis, typically, anywhere near its price, you have one transformer feeding both sides. This had two transformers. They were using mili military grade parts. Uh, Mike later on will show you some, some close up uh, uh, later. But <clears throat> what I loved about the fact was everything was built to much higher standards than you would expect in this price range. And um, they had some very, very cool ideas in terms of the, uh, the, the, the way that they laid things out. So. It's very common when you and I are hooking things up that you lean over the product to hook things up. Now, you will know this uh, because this is almost always the case. <clears throat> the lettering for the inputs, the, 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 the connectors, and so on are always right side up. So if you're looking from the back on, everything is the way it's supposed to be, you know, left, right, whatever it is. But if you're bending over, <clears throat> it's upside down because now, Right? You're bending over. These guys printed the lettering right side up and upside down. So if you were bending over, you would see left printed right side up for you. Very cool. Small little thing, but wonderful idea. The RCAs, for example, were made by a company called Tiffany. Not Tiffany the Jewelers, but another company. And Tiffany back then was uh, uh, considered one of the very best uh, makers of connectors that you could buy they were using that. So that gives you a bit of an idea of how good and solid this company is. Um, what's fascinating also is that after all these years, very few of them still exist that's available for sale. But if you ever see them and you're thinking about buying something for a secondary system or whatever it is, you can pick them up typically between 600 to 800 US dollars. The this amplifier, when it came out back in 86, 87, sold for 1595 US dollars. So that gives you an idea of how well the uh, value has been protected after all these years. Um, if you were to pick one up, you will know right away this thing is serious, it's chunky, and I have incredibly wonderful memories because back when I could afford one, I bought one to power my Apogee Duetas, which were power pigs. They just sucked up all the power you could give it. And typically, you'd have to use big Levinson's or big Krell's. And yet, the, the uh, Aragons did a very, very, very good job driving those, much better than the comparable B&Ks and the comparable PS audios. This thing was absolutely phenomenal. I couldn't recommend it more. The reason that I have this as part of my collection is because from time to time we will use it as a service load. So if a client of ours brings in a piece that's dead, an amplifier, and they need something to borrow, I'll give this to them because it's so reliable I don't have to think about it. Anyway, this is the start of a new series. We'll go through more as I have more time, but I hope you enjoy watching it. If you've owned one of these, I would love to read your comments. If you've never owned one, but you know of it, um, write some comments down. If you have products in your collection that you really enjoy and you want to share with us, please, again, put in the comments below. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.